How you doing, man? You okay? I'm feeling good. I'm good. feeling good. Do I need headphones or I'm all right? They're right here, brother. Okay, cool. We got any more joints around here? I can't smoke like I used to. Why not? To. I don't know. I just Thank I have you. a tolerance now. I have oh, a tolerance man. now. We don't okay, rock. Okay, okay, though. It's all this. good, man. This is a safe life. place. I'm a little high right now. It's all good, B. That's good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. Mike, we got a great one today, oh, bro. We have a legend, man. This we is got beautiful. a legend. Old we got the one G. and only, Busy Bone. Biz, What's Biz, What's Cleveland What's, What's up? Cleveland Bone showing thugs. love. Bone Thugs in Harmony, Bone Busy thugs. Bone. I'm so, glad. I'm so glad to be here. I appreciate you guys. I really, really do. Big shout out to AG, my boy Mr. King, for helping orchestrate this and put this together. Absolutely, man. I'm a big fan of Bone Thugs. I can't even the hear the name. Money. I can't even hear the name without thinking, Bone, 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 Dude. Oh, my God, man. Welcome, that's dude. A, that's a great video, Thank too, you. right? That's Thank an you. awesome video. Thank you. Well, you have an incredible story. I mean, you know, take us back to... You know, really, I mean... Where it all started. Yeah, where did it all start, brother? Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Me and my boys, real young. Who else came out of Cleveland that rap? Oh, uh, uh, MC Brains. A guy by the name of MC Brains. He did some stuff, Mike, with uh, Michael Bivens from um, New Edition. Went platinum, real, real big. And then Kid Cudi, um, MGK. Oh, that's right, also. Kid yeah. Cudi. Yeah. yeah. Love Kid Cudi. Yeah. But started started young. Mm -hmm. Started real young with me and my boys. And um, it's that Cooley High Harmony story. Wally died and, you know, you hear it all in Crossroads. It was that kind of that kind of life. And Easy e he, he found us, you know. and He the said the, the thugs in harmony, right? Right. And the rest was like, the rest was history. You know what I mean? It's... Of course, over 26, 27 years, I'm leaving out a few parts, but for the sake of time, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. We got all day, We brother. got time, brother. I mean, all yeah, day. well, you know, it was Bring us in. It was the streets. It was early, early 90s. It was cocaine. What was the shoe store? I used to go to the place to you get the shoes. Yeah. What's the name of the place? Um... Oh man, you got down me. Alberts, Mr. Alberts. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Alberts. Mr. Yeah. Alberts with Mr. the Gators. Alberts, get your yeah. alligator shoes and Mr. Mm -hmm. Alberts with the and Mr. Alberts. All the fly stuff, and now they yeah. just put a casino right next to his old shop downtown. Oh, man. Which that's is cool. real that, cool. That must be beautiful. Man. No, that's real nice. No, I used to, to see live it. in Cleveland for ten years. Really? Yeah, Shaker Heights and stuff. Okay. Right down there. Oh, Shaker. I was always I was always down. What what was the, um what was not the Q Club? What was the name of the clubs back in the day down there? It was mostly uh, the flats. Yeah, the flat. No, but it was some other clubs mm -hmm. too. That was really some awesome back in the day clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know Cleveland that well. I played the Browns a few times. Came into town to play the Browns. Cleveland's a real that, city with beautiful people. Yeah. Yes, I, indeed. I love yeah, Cleveland. absolutely. I love yeah. Cleveland. People say, "What the fuck are you in Cleveland for?" My Good food. I love Cleveland. Good food. Good food. Home, home of the, the uh, Lancers. You ever uh, went to Lancers? Yeah, Lancers. Yeah, it's still there. Lancers, it's still, yeah, that's Lancers, Wishbone Lancers, Place right yeah. there. That's his spot. Lancers. It's definitely George a spot. Dixon was my man. They yeah, Hot Sauce Lancers. Williams. Yeah. yeah. Food spot out there. Real good food spot. But yeah, you know Cleveland. You know, and Cleveland turned me into the peep game. Frog legs. Really? I never ate frog legs. I went to Cleveland. I got turned down on frog legs. Frog legs originally a French dish? I have no idea, but if I learned it in Cleveland, it's so good. Yeah. Fried frog legs. Interesting. Oh, that sounds like some Cajun stuff. You got addicted stuff. to that stuff. You yeah. got addicted yeah. to yeah. that stuff. Yeah. It's um, a certain southern swagger. Yeah. A certain southern swagger in Cleveland that they seem uh, a lot more down south. And listen to this is what you would know. Interesting. Too. Cleveland have um, a variety of gangsters. Really? Yeah, they don't fuck around. Mm. Irish mob. No, I'm talking about today. Italian mob, yeah. Today, right oh, I now. I thought you were talking about back in the day. Yeah, like, I know. Danny right. Green and those guys. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about right mm. now today. Still now? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Interesting. Well, people, how did people, you... People from big cities go out this I'm in Cleveland, this little ass town, and find, fall off to a big surprise. Yes. Mm. It's dangerous. Many a times, many a times. Yeah, it's very dangerous. It's very right? dangerous. <laughs> oh, no. 
talk a little bit about that, man, and come and, you know, how that infused your music. How was it that you guys came together, you know, instead of, you know, each of you sort of having your own individual path, you know, or thinking that you wanted to go it alone instead, you know, you guys really came together, were a group. I was, um, I was selling dope for my father at the time. Wow. And... Are you from Huff? Um, off of uh, 10 five, 105. Um, so I was selling, selling dope for my father, and my father used to run around with Lele's mom. You know what I mean? Um, they knew each other just in passing. And then she told me I, I looked like her son, and she told me about her son's rap group. So I went over to his place and left a, a rap on his, his bunk bed. And come to find out, we had already met in school, and then he came over to my house, and that's how I stopped selling dope and started rapping. Wow. That's amazing, dude. And that's how, then he introduced me to everybody else. He introduced me to, you know, Crazy was the first one he introduced me to, because that was like his partner in crime. Mm. Um, like, they was musical partners. And yeah. Flesh and Bone at the time was playing basketball because he was a star basketball player. He went to wound up going to Allegheny, so he's our athlete. Mm. So it was just them two at that time. And then I came along, Wish came along, and everything just start, started culminating. Because, you know, Flesh, she did two years um, with, with, uh, in Allegheny, and we couldn't pay his tuition. Like, we mm. couldn't pay his tuition anymore. And then the car got shot up, so he didn't have a way to get, get back up, back and forth. Some street stuff we was going through, just nonsense that, you know, you go through in Cleveland. Um, and then after that, you know, uh, all, all avenues started to close down on us, like what we were going to do with our lives. And they started dropping off dead bodies in our front yard. Wow. Because Sherm, well, not Sherm. Sherm out here is like uh, PCP. Yeah. But Sherm in Cleveland is embalming fluid. Mm. Mm. So that hit the neighborhood really, really hard. Some guy robbed zombies, a couple. Zombies walking in zombie the Zombie water. Zombie water. Yeah. And, and anyway, it, it attacked the hood. And off of that zombie water, you kill people. Absolutely. Like, How are people doing that? Is it dipped? Is, or is yeah, like weeds dipped, dipped in, in, in it? And in the freezer. They would dip it, dip it in the embalming fluid. A guy would go in Dang and rob does. a funeral home. And he would come up. And, and he would bring a, like a new <laughs> drug to the neighborhood. Yeah, it's, it's some scary shit. It makes you strong as a bull. As an ox. You are a fucking... You are metal, Monk, you are steel. Monster, no pain and if you're already you. strong, you're unstoppable. The police gonna have to do something to you. Shoot you. you no, know, some oh they shoot them and they still kill the cops. Yeah. When you're on that shit, they still shoot it, goes right through them, they keep coming. Oh, mm -hmm. that's some scary shit. That's scary. That's scary shit, dude. What was your guys' first break as a musical group? We were messing with a local guy. Um, he owned a record store. And I had some kids at the time, so I was working for him as well on the weekends. Um, and uh, he put out a record with us, a record called Faces of Death. And, you know, we named it after, it was an old video that came out. Yeah. It was just showing yeah. getting fucking Docu killed. Yeah. Documentary of Death. Faces of Death. I remember awesome that. back in the day. I saw it too. Yeah, we were little gruesome little dudes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, were, yeah. we were into that for some hour. You yeah. know, some like goth. Yeah. We happened to like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, um, that really... You know, death and spirituality is a big part of you guys. Yeah, it always has. You know, yeah. grandma going to put it in you. Yeah. Um, the neighborhood's going to put it in you. When you aren't with your parents, someone else's parents is going to put it in you. Mm. You know, when my mom wasn't there, Lazy's mom was there. So mm. I had someone there. So, mm. you know, th that kind of thing. And then spirituality just runs through just runs through us. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. It comes all through. Levels, yeah. On all levels. I think, I, was, that, I think it, um, it's nature. Spirituality is nature. That's right. Because yeah. at a certain stage in your life, you start thinking about your mortality. Where am I really going from here? What's going on? It's almost over. Right. What's going to happen from now on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should I be scared? Should I be nervous? Should I be sad? How should I feel? Should I be glorious? Should I be happy? Right. Yeah. What the fuck? What do you think... Well, that's an interesting point, Mike, because right. there's a lot of people out there who don't believe in God, who don't believe in a higher power, who are, you know, atheists. Well, I believe and, in, my, in my experience in God, I went through all that, too, using religion for my better purposes, whatever it is. And then as you get older, God lets you know he's there. 
You know what I mean? He lets you know that you're getting older and that the reality is that it's very shortly and no longer going to exist. So how do you feel about that? And he lets you deal with that for a minute. Talk all your, your tough shit that goes on in your ego that you feel like you're a god and you feel like you're this and that. You're not going to exist much longer. Yeah. Everything you ever said will no longer exist. Yeah. How do you think people who don't believe in God, well, I guess we don't know because we're not those guys, but what would they say about our purpose here? You know, is it just a materialist experience we have? I think it, I think to answer that question, it would have to be what you relate with. Because if you don't believe in something beyond, just on a broad spectrum, you know, if we out there fishing, come on home mm. type shit, if you don't, be, you know, you, your, your, your lack of, of, of love is you cut off at a certain limit. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's endless and boundless with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I Absolutely. think that those kind of people are only enhanced by people like us just understanding, mm. you know, they're, their, you know, their journey may be a little slower. That's the beauty of God. Yeah, that's what I believe in us. Mm, at some that, point too. in life, you got to realize that it's God. Because in order not to believe that it's God, you have to believe there's something that's nothing bigger than you. If you believe that God doesn't exist, you have to believe that you're the biggest thing ever. You have to believe that there's, there's nothing bigger than me. There's no God. It's me. As a matter of fact, I'm God. How can you not look at me? How can I not think something bigger than me? Something grander than me? Right. Look where I come from. I'm, I'm filth. I'm trash in your shoe. Yeah. You know, it has to be a God for somebody like me to be me. Yeah. I agree with that. Mike, I've been listening to Manly P. Hall talks. Oh, God, that's beautiful stuff. And what is that? Manly P. Hall, he's... Sort of a Western he mystic. Too. He was murdered too. He was too. killed. Um, I believe so, yeah. He's a mystic. He wrote a lot of books on consciousness and spirituality and God and our existence and, you know, everything really. He's actually got, there's a building over in Los Feliz, Los Feliz in LA called the Philosophical Research Society where you could go, and he's got all of his literature. He's written tons of texts. But I'm listening to his talks because you can find them all on Spotify. Yeah. And something he said yesterday just blew my mind. Not didn't blow my mind, but it was so true, is that all roads to true wisdom lead through purification. Oh, shit, yeah. Shit, yeah. And, you know, my life has been nothing but that. Constantly purifying that's myself. Some, that's, that's crazy you say that because sometimes I, when I, when I'm looking at some of those shows like you know Monty and I'm, I'm listening to some of those lectures and I say to myself, Do I really want to be enlightened? Do you want to go any further? Mm -hmm. You sure you want to go further, nigga? You really right. sure you want to go further? You really think you're tough? You want to go some further? You want to learn some more about yourself? And I start to wonder sometimes, Wow, who am I? Why am I purpose here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why did my parents were the vessel for me? How could my parents think they could raise children with their lifestyle that they had? Yeah. Yeah. How come I feel sad for my family because they never had nothing good in their life since I was born and all of a sudden all this good stuff happens to me? Why me? I wasn't smarter than nobody in my family and nobody ever knew. These are interesting questions. What do you come to when you think about that? Wow, well, I come to the fact that um, the conclusion always comes that I should be on my knees worshiping. Mm -hmm. Surrender. That I'm really nothing. I agree with that too. You know, that's where I always go at the end of the day, directly to the universe. There's a police officer right here at the door. This is pretty awesome. Look, he has a gun. No, he's a delivery uh, guy. <laughs> he had a gun. <laughs> that's that backlight. Oh, man. But yeah, I agree. That's where I go, directly to the universe. Yeah, man. Because that's all there is, really, you know, at the end of it. Of course. Thank you.
Mike! Oh yeah, Saturday. And don't forget to ship out those hoodies to our fans. How do I know who this goes to? You know, this is not what I do. Fuck! Fuck! Hey, Eben, what's up? I'm not gonna get the hoodies out in time, man. Eben, I'm busy, okay? I'm at a photo shoot, alright? Try ShipStation.com. ShipStation? Right now, Hotbox and listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use promo code HOTBOXING. There's absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. So use code HOTBOXIN and get your ship together at ShipStation.com. Talk about the crossroads, man. Oh, man. It was... What is that song about? It, it was when, when Easy died. It was mm. so necessary. Mm. You know, and then Pac passed and Biggie passed. Mm. And, and it became a part of that culture because of that, you know. Um, but it came to be because of Easy e easy -E passing away and us wanting to give him something and put something together. So, and it materialized. We got in the studio. We were in our, well, we're, you know, I still consider us in our prime. But we were at a very early stage when people weren't rapping like that. But nobody was. So we had an opportunity to be free and just let it flow and just do what comes best to us. No competition, just let it flow. And it just came out and it um came out amazing. Yeah. And um it sixteen weeks, number one. I heard old uh what's that song with Billy Ray Cyrus and, and the kid? Um Not Old that. Town Road. Not, that. Not uh Old Town Road um just did sixteen weeks, so we tied. If he goes 17, then he beat us and the Beatles. So Damn. Yeah, congratulations to that young man as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yes, sir. Well, the Crossroads is just, it's like its it was meant to be there. Yeah. You know, it's meant to be. I agree. Like I was saying, even just the name, anytime I hear Bone Thugs in Harmony, I'm just transported to that thuggish, ruggish bone. Thuggish, you know ruggish I mean? ball. <laughs> and the love of money. I mean, it's just your sound was so infused with. Yeah, it was just infused with life and, you know, and something higher. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My you know? guys are like, my guys are so amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You no, know, my guy crazy was orchestrating that, that look, that feel, that environment, that atmosphere. Um, and everybody played a really, really significant part and a good part in it by giving each other the freedom to know these are your strong points. So we're going to allow you to do your thing, you know. So very, very, uh, a really good time. I, you know, I keep them locked in. You yeah. Know? You know, some things that have been blotted out from alcohol and weed, but yeah. there's certain things I keep, and that's definitely one of them, you know, the making of that song and the camaraderie that happened with it and how it came together. Even the way we put it together was different. It wasn't like uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Mm -hmm. It was like verse, 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 it was verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, end of the song. Yeah. Intro. So yeah, it was just the whole thing. It was just fun yeah. being able to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. You know, and being in a company that lets you do what you want to do, so. What was your relationship like with him that you felt you had to give him something back? I mean, yeah, of course. Of course. He um he took us out of nothing. We didn't have anything. Mm. Fed us, put clothes on our back. Everything. Just mm. loved us. Really, really loved us. Um and he uh he died really, really, really fast. Mm. Like real fast. We didn't know what was going on. We thought we were being played like Ice Cube and Dr. Dre said. The whole time he was in the hospital dying. Huh. 
the end time. We didn't know. Rent what? Uh, we lived in Chatsworth. We had a little uh, mansion in Chatsworth. Had a guest house, horse stables, the whole nine yards. You know, he, he really decked it out for us because we were all together. It was us and then our baby mothers and and you know yeah. our family, our moms and stuff yeah. like that. So everybody was coming in because that was the state that we were in, and that was what was around us. Nobody had nothing. Mm. Like nothing. So anyway, um, yeah, that that's man, I'm just going back through my memory. Give me a second. But anyway, let me Yeah, fast, yeah. It's all fast good, man. Forward it. Um we were talking about easy, correct? Yes. Um and we were talking about before he had passed. Or just, then, oh no no no, right at the point when he died. So we didn't know he died. We thought he was playing us like Dr. Dre or or Ice Cube said. That's crazy. Rent wasn't paid, and then a guy drove. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then a guy, the whole time. And then I found out, I was, <laughs> I was in Cleveland selling dope, in a dope house, when it came on TV. That Easy E has died of AIDS. Wow. It was crazy, and somebody that was there was like, "Hey, yo," that it was a big argument. Don't just tell him like that, and. So, you know, from that, I was just, because we didn't know at that point, because, you know, I got kids. So at that point, it was like, um, we really just thought it was, we didn't know what was going on. Like, nobody told us anything. And then a guy came through and he told us to leave, gave us a clue. And he said, a guy by the name of Ed, never forget him. <laughs> well, <laughs> The motherfucker locked his door on me when, when they were outside shooting. So I'll definitely not forget it. That was a different incident. Fucking but, Ed. Ed. Fucking Ed. Ed. <laughs> fucking Ed. Fucking Ed. You know. Um, so he told us, he said, you guys go home. He just, he said, you guys are free. Go home. Like, free? You owe us money. What are you talking about? He's like, go home. And then everybody, we were still thinking he played us. And... And then that's how we went home. And that's how we maintained up until the point we found out. And then we came back together like, holy shit, did you hear what happened? That's when we started because we all live on different sides of town. You know what I mean? I live with dad, with my babies. And yeah, so that's oh, what happened. Dude. Yeah, that's so you're out in L.A. Living the lifestyle. Did he look sick? No. No. Not he at all. Fine. I I used to ask him though, because he used to sleep with a lot of women. I used to say, because I was, you know, when I was a little younger, and you know, you're a little more naive, and you're yeah. you're thinking, you know, I'm 16 rolling around with him. I said, do you, do you wear condoms? Are you worried you really about asked catching? Him that? You really asked him I, I really, that? I really did, Mike. I really yeah. did. I was just an inquisitive guy like that, and I think that that sometimes got at him because I was very, very open and I had high energy. You know, um, like I was, I needed Ritalin. When I was young, I was, <laughs> I was when I was young like that. In my twenties, I was addicted to sex. I was, just, <laughs> I was not even funny. I'm so sick. I'm so, it's so shameful and stuff. Oh. You know what, man? You live and you learn. Yeah. God damn right. You know, that's the best we can do, brother. Fuck. That's right. You know, if you have some idea about what you want to do in life and you don't know the consequences of that because you're too young and nobody's ever shown yeah, you no one shows what are you shit. gonna do yeah you don't do nothing but go through do? it you're gonna do I the best you can it. with what yeah, you got really crazy and then oh fuck you know something happened <laughs> oh, man so that's that must have been just insane dude so a guy shows up he's like you guys go home so you just you're like we had to pack uh, we're everything. We're going back up. to Cleveland. Yep, I sent, I I sent house, my kids right? and then. Yeah. So, that whole time, were you recording music? Were you, no, no, we had just finished. Not yet. We had just finished Eternal. We had just finished Eternal up, that, the Crossroads record. The, now, Crossroads was a remix off of an original song we had, See You at the Crossroads for Wally. Oh, interesting. Yeah, definitely. So, anywho, yeah, yeah, and it just, and I found out on the news in the dope house. Whoa. We're well, selling dope. Whoa. That's crazy. And wow. then you guys found out and you came back together. Uh huh. And war began with Ruthless Records. So, like, a whole yeah, bunch of different people crazy. started fighting over Heller. Jerry Heller was fighting over it. Um, uh, Easy E. Um, girlfriend. Easy E's fan. Right, right, right. They, they had their whole thing going on, too. So, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy for a while. We were kind of being tossed around. My my intentions were, I was telling my guys, we're free, let's not re-sign. We're free, 
let's not resign. And I think that began that began the irritating part for the crew because of I was early on it, like really, really early. And my guys just wanted to party. I got kids. So I'm thinking about masters later on. Right. I'm thinking about ownership later on because I know that they're going to, you know, get older as well. So I'm thinking in that state. Yeah. And my guys wasn't thinking They're like, man, let's just party, man. You know, let's kick it. Let's have fun. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And that began my separation and going into my own path. And that's when that began. Just financially, I had to eventually sue them just for my solo rights. Like I had to sue her because I signed when I was 17 years old. So yeah. I'm really just working on the love anyway <laughs> yeah. because I didn't want to be attached to anything. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I went through a lot of wars, but I have a good, a, a good business relationship with Ruthless Records and Tamika now. We used to go at it. and But now I have a really, really good relationship so what's going them. on with Lucifer's records right now um they have anybody I don't think yet? anything's going on easy ease of state and it still collects money it's still up and running residuals and different things it's still up and running and it's still moving definitely definitely still going strong just no new music is coming out of there okay. and I just think that the musical interest has left because I don't think nobody there at this point really, really loves music beyond the groups that are already encompassed in the company. Loves Easy E, loves Bone Thugs and Harmony, loves JJ Fad, loves some of the Dre reels and stuff like that, but doesn't love music to put out more music. And I, is what I think is going on there. Someone is there that don't like love it. You know what I mean? You have to love it, or you can just yeah, sit back. She's sitting it. on her bank. You know, and that's not nothing wrong with that either because she's doing a good job in there for everybody. It's all good. What years was that all going down? Which when did Easy pass? 94, 95. Okay, 94, 95. Yeah, he was first, then, then, then Pac, and then Big. Wow. The Big Three. Wow. That's the Big Three in hip hop. Easy, Pac, and Pac was in. Yeah. Easy, Pac, and Big. Sort of earth shattering those losses. Oh my gosh, for the hip hop community, it I was met terrible. Three of them too. It was terrible. Yeah. Because you know this is pre social media. Yeah. This is pre Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is, you know, back when Zuckerberg was just getting started. <laughs> yeah. Before, you know? before that. Before you know, that. Um, yeah. this was. So it was a different time. Music yeah. was everything. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Everything. Absolutely. Death Row and, and, and Dr. Dre and Tupac. And it was it was everything. Music was a part of. And then for guys in sports and things of that nature, all we did was stay around each other. We were always involved in around each other's circles. So it was just a lifestyle that when people see you, they just show you so much love. They Sometimes they just come and they just... I'm on tour right now, and I get people that just start dropping tears and saying, Crossroads changed my life. Absolutely. They played that at my son's funeral and different. Ooh. Yeah, so you get that all the time. So, oh, yeah, it was, it was just impact, I think, is it, to make a long story short. Absolutely, man. Um, what was it like working with Biggie? Oh, my God. Biggie was the boss. He was, uh, <laughs> shit. One of my all-time favorite pregame songs, Notorious Thugs, dude. He was the goddamn Don of New York, if there ever was one. Yeah. The whole city gave him love. And, I, I mean, I'm quite sure you're familiar with New York. Yes. It's a tough place. Absolutely, man. It's a tough place to just be in, of course. It's a tough place to just be in. And they everybody embraced him. Wow. Like, everybody. Everybody. So you felt that when you was with him. So all it, it was always in a boss format when I would sing. And then when we did the song, it was smoking weed, drinking. He was very cool. Very good dude. One of my one of my guys came in, my my little brother Capo, rest in heaven, he came in with a Tupac shirt on. Oh wow. So him and Lil C's is looking at each other like this. <laughs> They doing this. Oh, Ain't nobody fuck, backing dude. down. I'm just watching these two young lions <laughs> before I intervene. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> with the shirt? Yeah, get the, well, not so much with the shirt. Yeah, with the yeah, tension. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because Big. No, I know. Of see, course. Because I, Big, what yeah. nobody knew, is Big actually loved Tupac. Right. And wished him no harm. And now we know, now that we see things for what it is, who did what, the story came out. 
how did it happen? It's just like when, what happened with Pac. That boy who went out there to do that, he was hustling. He was out there with four other guys, but he went there by himself. Now, if, you're in the, if, you, if you're in this world, you know I'm going to try to make you hit me so I can get money from you. Mm. And it happens all the time to where, to where people want to get assaulted in order to hit you with a lawsuit. He mm. was there hustling. And just standing out there at the VIP right outside the door so he can be seen. That's a hustle. And if you know, if you know the streets, he was trying to get some money. And I think everything else that transpired in it is the gang culture in Los Angeles. They don't even bring Jesus with them. When it comes to war, all spirits are out the door, as we've seen what happened with Nipsey Hussle. Mm. It's a different culture. Like, it's, it's real warfare with no heart in it at all. So that, that's my take. I've been wanting to talk to Mike about it for so long. I just never had the opportunity because, you know, when you're friends with somebody and you know somebody or you consider yourself someone, a friend of someone, you know, because I've, I've met Mike three times and I, I've always remembered it. And he's, he's my champ. You know what I mean? He's my Thank heavyweight. Thank you, brother. Thank he's you. He's my heavyweight champion. You know what I mean? No doubt, man. So... Anywho, yes, yeah, so I wanted to always tell Pac my, I mean, excuse me, I wanted to always tell Mike my assessment on what I thought really, really happened. You know what I mean? And, and just because we like to understand things about people we know. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't How mean did to get Pac deep, feel? my bad. No, hell yeah. No, we go deep, brother. Really think cool. about Pac. Pac, man, was, if you met him, he's really beautiful, but he's just too, too intense. Very intense. Mm. He's too fucking intense. Very intense. Yeah. Well, he was living, his living yeah, he, conduct he was, living was his, yeah, tied he, to his beliefs. Yeah, he really believed that he was a revolutionary. Yeah. yeah. And he was. He was. I believe, you know, you know, if time would have prevailed and permitted, he would have somehow gotten hindered. Hmm. Because people like that always get hindered. Well, he... I mean, in many ways, I mean, he was in a hindered. different. I mean, in a yeah. different way, with him still being able to be here, but he was a revolutionary in the way Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Still to this day, like you know, everything that happens is meant to be, even though it hurts. Mm. Still to this day, that's really, really what he is. He's revolutionized the minds of people. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, guys like him. He's. I mean, look at the impact he had. My God. It's just the time Big that he incredible. had. He impacted me. Yeah, absolutely. Individually, as a person and as an artist. Yeah. Like, he impacted me. The yeah. way he, when he came into the studio and he, what he, how he did it. Ever since then, it's three songs a day for me. Mm. Every time I go in the studio, I make the most of it. Mm. He impacted me as an artist and as a person and as a man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. I feel the same. I mean, I never had a chance to meet him, but just listening to his music, mm -hmm. you that know, was him. and some people like that though, and, uh, on the, in the path of history are so explosive and revolutionary and paradigm shifting that it's almost like there's not enough energy for them to last that long. Man, you know that's I mean? interesting when you say that about Pac. Because he didn't give a fuck about dying. He was ready to yeah. all time. Right. And he lived that way. Yeah. He would say to anybody, he don't care to you, me, he would say, fuck you, fuck you, to anybody. He didn't care who they were, how big they were, how strong they were, what reputation about them being dangerous. He was just a fucking loose cannon sometimes. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful dude, man. Yeah, yeah, that's what'll do can it. Live in that that's way. What, yeah, that's what'll do it. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to evaluate yeah. somebody that you care for. And you just want, you it's hard to, to do that. Down yeah. Especially, yeah. Right, I hear that though. I definitely yeah. hear that. You know, it just hurts, you know, to think about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just cause that time and that moment and that time, it was a lot of lot of pain going on. Easy E yeah. just went. You know what I mean? We still getting over that and of course, stuff happening in our family is just one thing compiles on to the next thing, and it keeps on going, keeps on going for, for a guy like me. But I do hear, I hear what Mike is saying. You know what I mean about calming down, and you know I understand where you're coming from as well. So, yeah, yeah, just yeah, 
No, it's it's really. I mean, he's a he's a he's a demi he's a god man icon he's, man you know yeah icon like Jaden says like what's old Jaden said he's an icon absolutely man. yeah he died the youngster young kid yeah twenty five yeah, well Jayden. talk about yeah. talk about beef in the rap game man. and talk <laughs> about it's a now. myth they don't have beef no more <laughs> it's a myth no as Alan Iverson said that's a myth really but no, um. No, it happens. It yeah. happens just with anything else. It's less corporate mm. and more the workers. Mm. It's less corporate beef than it used to. Like, it used to be corporate beef. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You see Diddy and shit going right. at it. Right. You know, because that's corporate beef, two CEOs. You very rarely see that now. You see the young guys. And then, you know, um, social media and attacking a camera. And then, you know, when you shock someone for some odd reason, they want to see it again. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, it's that compulsive disorder we have as, as people. So those things are trending right now. So beef, just to bring that together, beef basically is surmised as that. It's bullshit. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> it's bullshit. For real. It's in the, in the day and age of social media, it's a way to get followers views views you're yeah. famous like that yeah one time i'm in new york man. i'm listening to i'm in my car listening to the radio station and i don't know who mr matt i don't know who was in new york and he had a beef i guess big daddy Kane. big daddy Kane heard him on the radio heard he was downtown went down to beat his ass on the radio station i don't know who it was but i know it was big daddy Kane. Kicked his ass, came right. to the radio station and kicked his ass in the air. That's how it was back then, dude. Yeah, yeah things change dramatically. Now it's just really, what they call it, clout chasing. Mm. You know, capping. <laughs> clout that. chasing. Clout chasing. He's capping. Yeah. You know, to get people to, you know, get views. Right. You don't really get no money off views, but, you know, like my kids, as they're growing up, you know, I see it. I see mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. You know, as a father, you see what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when you're in the industry, you just got to stay in, in your own lane and in and, and music. Yeah. You just got to stay in your own lane. You see how Mike stays relevant and yeah. what he's doing. It doesn't matter if he's in the ring or if he's not in the ring. He can still go. He can act in box, top mm -hmm. box office goddamn movies and things of that nature. So, you know, it's, it's, it's that too. You know, it's knowing that balance between what's going on where we're at, and when we're talking about grandfather money and generational wealth. And listen, absolutely, absolutely. Mike Bisley, you get this, no one I, I realized in life so far, everything you want, once you let it go, you receive it. Mm -hmm. All your dreams and thoughts of money and wealth and, you know, um, being in light and all that stuff, when you let all that stuff go, that's when you get it. Mm. Just let it go. Let yeah. it let it go. Stop thinking about yourself right. in your head. How great you are. What, how special. If you let it go, right. That's because you're not happy when you're thinking about yourself. Mm. Only thing you think about is your, you know, your guilt, your jealousy, your enviness. Mm. You know what I mean? Your shame. That's our ego. That's my ego. Mm. Yeah. That's my ego. It's like, have you ever, have you guys ever come across a Chinese finger trap? Tell me about that. You mean those one things? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the Chinese finger trap is you put your fingers into it. Right. And the more you pull, the tighter it gets. So you oh, can't get yeah. your fingers out by pulling them out. You have to go in further to loosen it up, and then you can one by one take your fingers out. Mm -hmm. But the more you pull and try to just pull out of it, the tighter it gets. <laughs> you blow your finger out of socket. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that is. Mm-hmm. It's that thing. The more you want something and the harder you pull and like try to reach for it and try to get it. Right. It's just out of reach. Yeah, you gotta let it all go. Just let it all go and it comes. To you. Mm. Yeah, that's some real shit about life. Yes, it is. Um well you got some new music coming out. Hell yeah. Put yeah. it out, let's hear let it. Let me put it on. Yes, yeah, yeah, some new stuff. It's uh it's addressing uh a few of you hear it, but you know I don't know if you know what's been going on. But talk about it, brother. We know about it, but okay, we want to well, hear you, know, you talk about it. You know, Lazy he he got into it with Offset and the boys uh, and Twenty One Savage, and they got to the jumping him. And I, I'm in the same group, so I decided to you know support my boy 
And then I pulled out some. I pulled out some guns. I went and went out and had a good time. And then you a, did a video. Yeah, well, I was on live, and my father-in-law he gave me a Winchester, like a two hundred year old yeah. Winchester, like very expensive gun. So I started pulling it out, and then they said, "Well, he's this is his response," and it, this 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 happened, and then the people that love Bone Thugs and Harmony said, "Okay, I'm gonna need you to." Uh, you know, we, we need to hear what you have to say because Lazy Bone put out a like a, a record against the guys Uh huh. because they said they told Lazy, throw up your money. Um, and Lazy said, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't about money. It's about skills. And then, you know, Lazy shows off his 6,000 square mansion and pillars. And so they started going at it like this. You know what I mean? And it, these this is my responses. Um, what, so which, uh, which one should we do first? Enigma. Okay, Enigma, Enigma is the one we want to see go. first. And then my, my, my guy out there, he edits all my videos. He, 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 he Everything that I do, he's my, my guy. And That's people dope. are saying we found our sound, so it's produced by my guy, Blaze. So. Blaze. Take these off. It's, you can see it's a beautiful piece of music, right? Hell yeah. Besides you like God, dripping, I ain't tripping, got a couple of them, dog. Listen to me, Kevin, this is Cleveland, nigga, we get even, nigga, don't be afraid of Steven. Or that big boy hit you with the sick boy, I'm like sick Freud with that vulture, an enigma, and that culture beat him. And I'm all the reason I'm a low money, nigga, cause it looks like a nigga gonna often need her when I call, seen her running like a mother, a millimeter. But I am a good leader, I give you another bank, I give you another heater. Remember me, motherfucker, the gun on the album cover, but one of the tower brothers, the 50 of power brother, the Michael of power brother, the cyclical nature, the circles all around the capital, but there would be such a nigga, money, got the salary, brother. Brother Mickey and Mallory, brother, I got the calorie, brother, with all the powder, you motherfuckers, I'm fucking for the musket ass. Let it off in this motherfucker, watch your mouth, you niggas soft in this motherfucker, bet the industry just tossed you out, y'all all on the label, little goddamn cocksuckers, y'all living off show money, get paid every first of the month, now that's more money, they don't eat from the grave at the crossroads, when I look at my son, say that show money, murder, 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 I am general, you little niggas, show ain't sweet, you niggas, you number running, I'm on TMZ, and I'm a free MC, I got love for the young bulls, but that's little leg in the building, chasing around little children, my niggas hunt, I can't front, but I'm I'm chillin' my artillery is steady, he did every every motherfucker plays it on my go, so I'll be ready, 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 ready. Hope I've been already here, run up the back with the beard. Hopefully they will not follow me, yo, I'ma pull up my pistol and pew, pew. DM is all in my DM, bitch, I'ma call him, I see him. As soon as they over 18 and your money is gone, I'ma see how you been. Niggas is still in my camps, trippy the yams, yeah, trippy the yams. And all of my people that go with the ball and I'm coming. So that was my follow-up response. The first, the first song I put out was called Carbon Monoxide. I don't know if you have that one. You didn't send Carbon Monoxide? Blaze. Now, Stalking Me is it, it's, it's my newest single, and that one I wanted it to be a little longer, like, because now music, it's only three minutes, 2.45. Yeah, two that, I wanted to give a traditional four-minute, really good listen, so that's why I wanted to put the orchestra in it, because my weed heads out there, they like that, That's and I wanted to Hell cater. Yeah. I wanted to cater to them. It's got to be insanely hard, man, the music industry. It's to survive, yeah. It's yeah. complicated yeah. if you're on the level. If you're not on the... If you, it's always been corrupt. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. been corrupt. 
What's why is it corrupt? Because there's somebody always it's trying like, it's to like make a money. Slave yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think it was it turned corrupt because they weren't opening up enough doors, and the only way to open up a door sometimes is to slide your envelope in, and that's where I think it began. Because of you know, because if it, if you were able to just walk through, it wouldn't have been no corruption. You know, everybody would have got an Instagram account, etc. Right. But it's when and doors this, are closed. And this has been happening since the beginning of the music industry. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, like way back. Mm -hmm. Music began, you know, because it's businessmen who see an opportunity and with children. an entertainer and an artist. Know, with yeah. Children. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And when you're young, that yeah. definitely. You're and like that's, fuck yeah. That's where all my um. A that's million where all bucks. My fights. That's where all my fights and all my absences have have had anything to do. It was always about business, wanting more. Yeah. Sitting at the table, wanting to negotiate and fight and keep our s stuff to ourselves and branching out and because they want everything. They want your shows. They want everything. That's they the want new 360. Everything. Now they want your show. Before you can do your own show, but mm -hmm. now they want your show too. Just in case you leave the label, the label say fuck. They want to own you. It's actually slavery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah, my son, they, they gave my son a half a million dollar deal, and he turned it down because they wanted to own him for 10 and years. And I know the people that made, that made that rule up and they're friendly with me, but I told them that's just bad stuff. I love Like, them. bring I that in a little to, bit. I love them to death. So even some of the guys that helped create and make that rule, but I told them that's a horrible rule. Yeah. You know, that rule is yeah, crazy. it's a bad world. I said, if that rule was done to you, what would you think about it? What's the rule? That they, you know, listen. Let me Lawless. explain this. Is there Let me explain this. You're an, you're an artist, right? Uh -huh. You're just an artist, so you sign a contract with me, right? Yeah. So if I send you on shows, you with my organization. I'm sending you shows into my organization. Um, we get paid. You know, we both. I get the money and stuff. And maybe you think I'm taking too much money, so you, you want to get off my label. We go to court and stuff, so you get kicked off my label. So you say fuck you. So you go on your own and make your money. You don't have to pay me, right? That's cool, right? I don't talk to you. I go on the road. I make my own money. It goes in my pocket, right? We don't have to talk anymore. Now it's different. You was on my label. We have a corporation. You're my business. Now if you even go on tour, I want some of that money too. I own and you. That's a 360. I own you. Fuck. You can't even make money on your own. Are there With your own skill. You don't own your vocals. On your voice. You don't own your voice. Right. No rules. Yeah. Once you sign that dotted line and they give you a couple of bucks, yeah, they got you. Well, there's Ooh. this big issue in the media right now with Scooter Braun buying up all of Taylor Swift's. Heard about or that. Owning all of Taylor Swift's. Who masters. did he buy it from? Who the record label that she was under? Yeah, but Taylor Swift has so much money. Why didn't she buy it herself? I know. That's, that's she, her people. Her people right. are slipping. Right. She need to go in, take all that tour money. Or maybe listen this, back this door and get that. A lot of these artists. A lot of these artists that um, we read about and they say, "Hey, he got four hundred million, got three hundred million." The artists don't have that much money. The artists just got the ego away by thinking I got this much money, but they're embarrassed to say I have nowhere near that much money. Right. And don't even know why they don't have it. That's true. That's they, very, they got very the big true. ego. They want people to think they have that, but they don't have the courage to say, hey, really, I'm being robbed. I don't know what to do. Be stopped. I don't have no right lawyer to go right. to or something. And that's how it's people normally ego. get it. It's all ego. That's not true when you say this is the richest. He made this. No, asking what he truly has in his account right now. Mm. Maybe not enough to buy a TV dinner. Hmm. Couldn't take you out to dinner, probably. Wow. That's some shit. Yes, sir. So as a young artist right now, what do you think the best path is? We had you this had young kid. You had to go online, kid. do your own shit, right? We had like this Soulja young kid. Like them did, right? Go online, do your own stuff. That's Independent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like what Soldier Boy did. There's no way you did. can win with a record label. Yeah, but like the record Soulja labels Boy, like yeah. cocaine, like drugs. Once it's in your, once it's in your mind, and it's in your blood. It's infectious. You can't leave them. You love being their slaves. Yeah, you know. You got to think about it. In eighteen, in eighteen sixty-two or sixty-four, when we had the Civil War, there were slaves fighting to stay in slavery. Mm -hmm. Imagine what a slave would do for some money. He'd fight to stay in slavery to get the money, which is really you think, nothing. You think slaves fighting for the South? were fighting because they wanted to stay in slavery or do you think that they were being forced to fight? Listen, um, no one can force you to fight. Mm. 
if you gave me a gun, if, I, if you gave me a gun, I'm gonna slay, I'm gonna shoot you. Right, mm. right. You know. Uh, interesting. That's just in, in the art of war. That's just how it goes. You have to know, mm-hmm. be prepared to die. And may and it and it's not necessarily a thing either of no, it's all wanting. About, it's all about brainwashing. Right. You're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Exactly. And you don't have a contrary thought to that. No, not one at all. Yeah. And that's the problem with the young, these young kids in the music industry, because you don't know. You've never had anything. You're probably coming from, you know, um, a place where you didn't have enough money for lunch every day, Mm -hmm. you know, and then somebody says, we'll pay you a million dollars. You're like, my life has changed. Right. But it's been people that yeah. have turned it down too and are better off now because yeah. they turned it down. I think it's that's so hard important. To turn down. It's yeah. hard to turn down. It's been a few. It's been a few. It's just you gotta fight through it in order to own your own. And that's what that's why I said what I said, that own your own. Go viral. Do it all yourself. And then when you get a company, just get a great attorney that can that's work all out you your need. deal a great right. Attorney. Yeah. And that's what it is. Work. It's paperwork. You know what I mean? You can get a good deal if you got a good attorney that really cares about your well being. Is this why agents came into being? No. Agents came into being. Agents are very interesting. Not music so much. Yeah, so, I mean. Like, agents came into, t- they make the real money. Yeah, agents get paid. Agents dude. make you the commodity. After the, the trainers, the coaches do all the work, the agent's going to come and say, hey, baby, I'm going to show you what you're worth. Yeah, yeah. Boom, and next thing you know, instead of, um, what are you, you playing, a basketball player? You got a $100 million contract to play basketball? I made for what ten years? Or something I don't know whatever yeah, it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, come do this commercial right here for fifty million dollars. Right. Mm. <laughs> commercial. Yeah. Mm. For fifty one commercial, fifty million dollars. This yeah, is the contract real. for three commercials, fifty million dollars. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Basketball don't mean shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's happening. But so the music industry hasn't really had agents. No, 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 no. It's a different ball game. It's artist to it's label. A, it's a real fuck you type of a game for They've someone that lawyers. don't That's have no money. That's all they fuck around with in the music industry. Lawyers. Yeah, lawyers. The corporations is, do. The labels do. Yeah, of course. Everybody knows everybody. So then, get you a good one. You are in listen, good shape. Good, in the music industry, me and you, we be sitting around right now, like we be all having conversation here. Like he's one of the guests and stuff, or you, and y'all two had a beef right now because your lawyer got the best of his lawyer, and you got his money, you took his money, you made, you made took three million dollars of money, made him go bankrupt, and we're all in the same room right now. Trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. No, fuck figuring out. They're mad. We're talking about he's some bullshit. Fight. And they mad. Yeah, got feelings. <laughs> right. I'm checking it out. What's going on? No, I'm not from everybody chilling. It's that the music business is real vicious. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like no it. love at all. Not very little love. That sucks. There might be some love now, but when I was down, there's good vibes in here, right? Of course. I mean, even just this building. No, I love in. it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the environment. I, I made sure I did a little recording before we came in here. It's really, really nice. Very, very good place. Yeah, man, really it's cool. good. It all comes from the top. It's a trickle down. Okay. Mike Tyson is yes. the Edith king Britain. of positivity. You have to be positive because you know sometimes um, I that's found right. and that's what I found that's out true. about myself. I was studying myself. I started studying myself and what my biggest issue and stuff. And I found out what my ego was. My ego was my, um, like I was explaining er- earlier, it was my shame and my guilt and my jealousy and my envy. That's my fucking ego. That's that shit to make motherfuckers think I'm a bad motherfucker. All that fucking filth. Mm. You know, my jealousy, my enviness. You know, my guilt, all that shit. People think, I and mean, all that tough guy, that's all that, that, that ego is. Hmm. It's my, my guilt and shit, my shame. Yeah. That's powerful, bro. Hmm. That's really powerful. Yeah, it is. Man. That can be so blinding. Ooh. You right? think, yeah, you think this is a gift. You think this is something God gave you, and this is just all your flaws. All your shit. Pushed in your face, right. and you want to avoid it, so you fight it, you show it. You know, you just show no love for yourself, so you show no love by acting out, being mean and cruel to people. Yeah. Because you're ashamed of what you may have done before in the past, and you think no one knows. And it comes a time you think everybody's going to know one day. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. 
not very often you get to have these conversations. Not very often. So I'm, I really appreciate the whole lane. You guys are big. Yeah. And I appreciate being here, too. <laughs> That's awesome, man. What else, man? So where's this beef with Migos at, dude? I mean, it's, is it's, it it fucking, it is it's it no, just a thing? Is it it's, over? It's nowhere. It, it started off with Lay, and then it started with Lay, you know, basically getting jumped by them two, and then I, I chimed in, and it really isn't anything at this yeah. point. Like, um, those guys aren't answering. Right, they're not, like, trying them. to. They're not trying yeah, to answer, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, so that's where it's at, and we just well, keep going. Well, that's good, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep it on wax. Keep it on wax. Keep it on wax, baby. Wax, baby. Love that. Well, is there anything else you want you ain't our to people know to know to um, before we wrap this thing well, up? Well, yeah, yeah, they can. Uh, my social media, you mean stuff like that? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, or anything else we missed, man. Oh, well, uh, let me see. I'm, I'm writing my life story. You know, a nice. lot of people don't know. I was kidnapped and found by uh, uh, John Walsh. Wow. Tell me story. about that. How long ago was that? Tell us that about was that. When I was a kid. Yeah, so yeah. I was kidnapped, my sisters and myself, and we were gone for 15 months. My mom looking for us. She found us through John Walsh. And, uh, America Most Wanted. Yes. Yeah, from America's Most Wanted because his son got killed. So, you know, from there, you know, that's my story. That's when I walk in and I talk to the Make a Wish Foundation or when I talk to abused kids or, you know, that's my charity work. That opens up the door in order for me to be charitable and people to relate to me as a person. And I think that's what's sustained me on that front as well. So, you know, that that's just me. That's Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know. New record, Carbon Monoxide, coming out. Uh, Mr. McCain, M-R-M-C-C-A-N-E on Instagram, YouTube, Jam TV, Busy Bone. Just get that in there. I am Busy Bone on Facebook. It's about it, rock and roll, man. Awesome, brother. You know. Thank you, man. Beautiful. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. You know I love y'all. You should be a hug from me. I love you. You know I love you. Yes, sir. That's awesome, man. Great at Mike. Man, listen, this is another great episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm Evan Britton. All right, we're out of here, guys. Love. Peace. That was pretty awesome. Nice.